This gangrenous green little graphics card is AMD's long-lost budget gaming GPU. It's called the RX 5300 and it was only ever launched in OEM form, which means you can only buy one of these as like a growth on the inside of an entry-level Alienware system. It's a bit weird that this is growing on the inside of an Alienware, but that's besides the point. What we're going to do in today's video is we're going to prod this little bad boy a bit and, and see what happens. But first, a word from today's video sponsor, Linode. Today's video is sponsored by Linode. 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 Linode is a Linux-based web hosting service, which according to G2, is the easiest infrastructure as service provider to use. Linode offers a wide variety of products, including web hosting, game server hosting, they can handle any computational load you throw at them. Linode also offers Kubernetes solutions using K8 with horizontal cluster auto-scaling. Whoa, that sounds very fancy. In other news, Linode also recently upgraded their block storage volumes with NVMe drives which means you can get a huge speed upgrade at no extra cost. If Linode sounds good to you, use the link in my description below to sign up for a 60-day, $100 free credit. Now this RX 5300 was launched back in May of 2020, so it's quite an old little card, but because it was only launched as a GPU for like terrible OEM pre-builds, it's quite a rare little beast. Now it is a 7 nanometer GPU based on the Navi 14 graphics processor, and its specs are just they look like that. The only thing that really stands out to me out of all of that is the frame buffer. This GPU only has 3 gigs of video memory. It's GDDR6, but it's, it's only 3 gigs. Back when the 3 gig version of the 1060 was launched in like 1912, people were like, whoa, that's not enough video memory. So that's probably going to be a bit of a limitation to this graphics card's performance. Now, in terms of power, the GPU has a single 6-pin and it's got a rated TDP of about 100 watts. But in practice, it draws quite a bit less than that. So it's, it's not a particularly power-hungry GPU. Interestingly, Tech Power Up actually lists the launch MSRP of this GPU at 100 $130, which I find a, a, a bit of a weird thing because you could never buy it. Is that the price that the OEM pays for the card or is that kind of where it's supposed to slot in price-wise? Like, I, I don't think I understand what that MSRP is supposed to mean for this card, <laughs> to be honest. But with that, let's have a closer look at this rare specimen by taking off the cooler and having a bit of a peek at the GPU underneath. Now, this PCB is about as interesting as a quarterly tax submission form. There's not a whole lot going on here. Although, if you have a closer look, you can see that there are a couple of blank spaces on the PCB for like additional power phases, some additional memory modules, and even an additional display port, which makes me think that they use the same PCB for like the OEM version of the RX 5500. Uh, but yeah, other than that, the, the GPU looks quite similar to a Polaris GPU, actually. Anyway, with that, let's put the cooler back on, drop it into a system, and see how this RX 5300 performs in some games. Now, as is always the case, we're starting off with GTA 5. This is running at high settings with two times uh, MSAA. Uh, we're averaging at about 100 frames per second here. And uh, what's really impressive is the power draw which has not gone above 69 watts, which means that we wouldn't technically need that six pin that we have in there. Whoa, this GPU kind of shreds at Fortnite. Uh, we are running at 1080p competitive settings, so it's everything on low with epic draw distance. And when you're looking off into the distance, it gets close to 100 frames per second, so it does drop down a bit, but yeah, this is a solid Fortnite experience. Finally found a gun! Now, when it comes to Battlefield 5, uh, again, with about 100% utilization on the GPU, we're, we're still sitting under that 75 watt barrier. It, it did occasionally jump into about 76 watts, but yeah, that's, that's pretty impressive. Here, we're running at 1080p medium settings, and we're averaging around 100 frames per second, which this is a pretty solid showing for a GPU with this kind of power draw, so yeah, it's pretty cool. So here we have Cyberpunk running. Uh, this is low settings at 1080p and I mean, this is, this is playable. We've got uh, 
it's in the 50s, but still, this is decent. We've got a thick crowd going on here. And uh, yeah, we're still sitting below that 75 watt utilization, which I think is really cool. So yeah, not too bad. And considering the power draw, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's reasonably impressive. But we definitely do have to compare it to something. So let's drop in an RX 580 into this test bed and see how this 5300 stacks up to one of its older brothers. The RX 580 is a more powerful GPU. It's got more than double the frame buffer and, and it's just a better gaming experience with that much older graphics card. Although the 5300 is way closer to the 580 than I was expecting. And the RX 580 is drawing significantly more power while gaming than the RX 5300. So in terms of efficiency, the 5300 is definitely a step up. Uh, but that actually got me thinking. We're hovering at a max of about 75 watts, which means this kind of competes with a GTX 1650 because, you know, that's one of the most powerful uh, non-supplemental power graphics cards that you can get. So let's see how it stacks up to that. It's a little bit better than the GTX 1650. Aside from Battlefield 5, the 5300 didn't have a huge lead in any of the games, which is probably why AMD proudly uses Battlefield 5 in the marketing material for the 5300. But funnily enough, despite the 5300's higher average frame rate, the GTX 1650 actually had a higher 1% low in a lot of these games, which led to a smoother feeling gaming experience. Uh, but there is a final thing that I want to try out before we finish off this video, which is overclocking. Now, I almost didn't even bother with overclocking this GPU, because in my opinion, the main shiv to the Achilles tendons of its gaming performance is that 3 gig frame buffer, and I didn't think overclocking it was going to help much. But then I saw a curve editor in MSI Afterburner, which got me, got me excited. I was able to get a reasonable overclock out of the GPU. In MSI Afterburner, I could go from a base core frequency of 1750 to 1950. And in terms of memory clock, I could go from 1750 to 1860, which was maxing out the slider. And I didn't have any stability issues after adding a little bit more voltage on the card. However, in terms of performance, oh, yeah, that's not much better, is it? In terms of averages, we're, we're pretty much just within the margin of error. However, the 1% lows are quite a lot better, which again makes me feel like that 3 gig frame buffer is our, is our main problem here. So the overclocking was about as fruitful as I was expecting. And with all of that being said, um, it's a graphics card. It does graphics card things, not particularly better than other graphics cards, but you know, it's it's fine. Let me know in the comment section down below what you think of this RX 5300, and if you're very sad that you can't buy one. I, I actually think that if it was actually available today for $130, it would sell very well, because, well, I don't think you can buy a GT 1030 these days for $130. Uh, although, if it was available, it wouldn't cost $130. So I, I guess it's all a moot point anyway, whatever. Uh, with that, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.